the, the etymology <laughs> is how it is that you study the root of a word and you go to where that word started and all that stuff. You guys took that in school. If you paid attention, you can sleep through it. But <clears throat> the fallacy is what I want to center in today. The etymological fallacy is when there is a belief that that the root of the word always is going to be the, the truth or the only way you can understand a word. Hear it again. <coughs> a word that means something originally. And the thought is, does that word stay consistent until the end? The reason that's important it's because words change in meaning according to society and history and generations, according to culture and geographical locations. And so when you look at the fallacy, the problem is when you only say only, this is a fallacy, that word can only mean what it meant in the original. That word can only mean what it meant in the original. It's a fallacy. And I tell you why that is a fallacy or falsehood. Because even the words that you use today did not mean that when they started out. The word consider, for example, when you say consider this and consider that, has everything to do with looking at the star and gazing the stars. That's the origin, that's the etymology of that word, consider, looking at the stars. Well, when I tell you consider today, you don't go out and, and, and look up at the heavens and say, well, let me see. Where, where, where are the constellations? That's not what you do. You have learned now in the behavior and the understanding of today that consider means think about something. Ponder about it. That's where you go with that, right? So most of the words that you have today, they mean something else. Got a friend who had a, a great struggle uh, with, with some of these wordings, and it was it, it, it is uh, hard because when you get somebody from England, for example, and you bring them here or vice versa, words mean something else to them. And we think, what's wrong with these people? Well, they're, they're the original English people, so if something wrong, it probably us. But even if you take us. Them and I, or we go over to Australia, then you're going to find something different also. Not all of it. We can understand each other. But meaning and etymology means something because you have to understand what something is at the time that the Bible was written. And some of those things go back to its roots and some of those things had a meaning on that time. And so we'll battle with that as we go. But let's read one passage uh, where, where this is happening in the scriptures. <clears throat> Let's go over to the book of Hosea, Hosea chapter 2, Hosea chapter 2. I've read this passage to you before, but I, I just want to use it today in Hosea chapter 2 as a way of seeing what, what, what is happening with the etymology and how you can have a fallacy happen. Hosea chapter 2, verse 16. And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi. Does your Bible say it says Ishi, or, or do you have a, a different, maybe you have uh, already the word translated? My husband. My husband, call me husband, yes. <clears throat> Ishi, and shall call me no more Baali. What is, what is, do you have Baali, or you have a different word there? Baali, Baali. <clears throat> For I will take away the names of Baalim out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. God was fighting with them about him being called Baali. And he says, you're not going to call me that anymore. Though the meaning of the word is Lord, he did not like the word in their mouth because they related it to Baal. So they said, Lord, Baali. But in their mouth and their mind, there was a connection to the pagan god named Baal. And God says, no more. You're not even going to say that word anymore. 
Now it's going to be Ishi, husband. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up Father Oscar to you. And your anointing, Father, we pray would be strong on him, Father. And he would teach us this morning the truths of the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> now, this is the day when you say, man, it's the beginning of a new year. Are we going in this direction? The battle for it is that the battle for language is something big right now. It's always been. God spoke the world into being. He spoke it into being. So language was right from the very beginning. He could have clapped it into being. He could have thought it into being. He can do whatever he wants to do. But he decided to speak it into being. Way before we became the world that we are, God already had decided to use language. The great rebellion of the Tower of Babel was about language communication. And God divides them there. And when you go forward, you realize the battle that, that they have. I, an etymology, an etymology problem is that fallacy of understanding that when something is originally one way, that it cannot change. More, a lot of things never change. A lot of wording stays the way it is. <coughs> but you need to pay attention to that language. And I'll bring it here to us. Right off the bat. What are the word gay means? Let me, let me ask a young under 25 person. Do we have a under 25? Yes? No? Maybe? No. We don't exist. I think you're the youngest. Oh, you're under 25. ¿Qué significa la palabra gay? Homosexual. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it means, not him. <laughs> I, 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 mean, I mean, that's what it means. Well, the etymology of that word is not homosexual. It means happy. It means somebody who's always making noise. Ah, that's gay. In fact, in fact, the Bible say, you know, the Bible will talk to you about those things. But if you go back into it, you're going to find even in the cartoons, we're going to have a gay old time. Right now, we say, no, we're not. <laughs> Why? Because the etymology of it changed. A group of people decided that happy and homosexual is interchangeable, therefore now it's gay. And young people do not even know what gay used to mean. You can go about it two ways. You can face it down and say, you know what? Gay means happy. I'm just going to use it anyway. Or you can understand that the world has changed. And you can fight that battle or understand that, you know what, let's give that up. And let's use it the way they use it so that we can have a conversation about it. That is what God is doing there in the book of Hosea. That's what he's doing. He is saying, I know I can bring back the word Baali from you, but I don't want to fight over it. Let's just, just, just call me husband. That's what he said. So that you take away that word from your mouth and you don't keep relating it to a pagan God. Amen. Now, there are all the words that we say, absolutely not. We are going to fight and die over that one. The gospel, for example, has been redefined and redefined and redefined, trying to take it away. <clears throat> Rainbow. I refuse to accept rainbow being a gay signal. I refuse to even acknowledge that it exists. When did they decide it? And who gave them the right to take that beautiful deal that God did with Noah to let us know that he's not going to destroy us by flood and to give us hope that all of a sudden we have to decide that it is their symbol. See, I decided I'm going to fight that. I don't want it. Why? Because the rainbow belongs to the Lord, not to them. Amen. Amen. They can have the word gay. 
I don't care. It's not, not in here. It's not in the Bible. They can have it. But rainbow is God's thing. That's why you have to know the etymology of a scripture, the etymology of a word. There is a language fight trying to arrest from you. Let me give you one. What does adult entertainment mean? Pornography. Yeah. Pornography. When did adult become synonym with pornography? So I had a certain age, you know, and that was good. And then I became an adult, so now I'm a pornographer. Huh? How did that happen? How did that happen? We did not pay attention to the fact that they were trying to convey a message that every adult should be a pornographer. That every adult has the right and the idea to go there. There's an idea being conveyed there. And that's why you have to fight it. No, you don't become an adult and all of a sudden you have a license. You may have a license from the devil or from society. Pornography is always going to be a sin, no matter if you're 90 years old. That's where this fight is on the etymology or something. The, the, the fallacy is, what does it mean originally? And not understanding that you can fight that at a different level and not understanding what it means now. Society right now is battling with this wording and battling with his wordings and it doesn't seem to matter and the church is losing the battle because it's not paying attention to the, to the field and what is happening there. Our young people are facing things that we have never faced before and they are developing a whole language that is outside of God. And in the process of it, some of it is innocent stuff that we can let go. And some of it is something that we have to grasp and say, no, that cannot go in that direction. So understand something, church. Things mean something different, even to different generations. The word success, how is that described? Let me tell you an etymological problem that I have when I came to the States as a young boy. I looked at somebody <clears throat> and success when I was coming up was this. A person who had his family with him. A person who was loved by them and that he loved them. A person who may struggle financially but he was providing for his house. That was success when I was growing up. Not here. I didn't grow up here originally. And when I came here, I remember working for this lady who had two sons. And both of them were a horrific, had a horrific life. He was four or five times drunks. Drug addiction in their life. One was a lawyer, the other one was a doctor. And I remember the shock that I had when talking to the mother and the neighbors and them, everybody described them as successful. I stood there in shock as a boy. I was like, okay. So your children hate your guts, but you're successful. I get it. That's good. You are Digging your own grave and going straight to hell. But you are successful. I understand it. I understand it now. Now I understand that in a materialistic society like, like the Western mentality, success is the big house and the big car. Yeah. yeah. What a dumb thing. If you have a big house and a big car, praise God. That's a blessing. I, I, I receive it. Receive it and be blessed by it. But that doesn't make you successful. No wonder everybody thinks that people like, like Bill Gates is so successful. You associate success with material possession. Tell me where that is in the Bible. Tell me. Show me. Show me where somebody is successful based on what he has. Amen. It's a fallacy. Yes. 
You understand that incorrectly. And you have to, why is that important? Because we have all these kids in college and all these kids in high school aiming to our success that is not success at all. And if you think it's happening outside, talk to the young people who are training to go to the ministry. And they think that successful is somebody who has a big church and who can wave and you know he gets to church in a Bentley. That's what he thinks success is. And it scares me because he has a fallacy in the way he understands etymology. Yeah. That's not success, brothers and sisters. Yeah. And unless we change it within us, we are, we are going to create a, 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 a whole group of little monsters in our pulpits who looked after themselves, not after the people, who, who measure things in the wrong way, who do not comprehend what it is that the gospel is about. Successful. Huh. I had that, boom. It was then that I started studying etymological fallacies and I said, oh, wow. It means something over there. It means something over here. A geographical location interchanging. You know, the whole deal, how it is. You can see it in the, even in the most minimum thing. I'll, I'll give you an example. And I'll finish because our time is up. Here is an example. <clears throat> Every country that I know, when somebody gets called to be in the Olympic team and you say, you know what? This basketball player is going to be called to the Mexican Olympic team. That kid thinks it's great. That whole people think, wow, you know, we got it. We made it, right? When you go to an American and you say, you know, you are in the Olympic team, this is what he thinks usually. Am I going to get hurt doing that? Because, you know, I'm supposed to, you know, play for the Houston Rockets. And I know that if I get hurt, no, I shouldn't do it. Well, what about, well, I'm a little tired and I'm, I don't want to be tired for the time when I see. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, by the way. I'm just saying you have to understand that people hear something differently based on what they believe successes based on, based on what they believe they are supposed to own up to or get. When the Lord was talking to the people in the, in the book of Hosea, this is what he says. There are some words that come out of your mouth that you are associating with the wrong thing. And some of those words <laughs> don't matter, but this one mattered to God. God says, I want you to call me husband, which was an intimacy with him. I don't want you to call me Lord because when you say Lord, now I'm not saying not to call Lord. No, we have that word today. But to them, when they said Lord, they say Baali. And God says, I hear it and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking Baal, that guy, and I'm not him. So stay with the language of God. Fight for it. When you hear Christians who have become four-letter word Christians, you have to understand that's not from God. Amen. For every word that comes out of your mouth, you will give an account Amen. in that day. Amen. The Bible says that. So speak godly. Amen. Walk godly and fight for language. Choose your battles. Choose your battles. I can give you a hundred of them. <coughs> or where you say, you know what? That's not a battle I want to get into. They can have the word gay, but they cannot have rainbow. Mm -mm, no. Not, not until they told me there's a bunch of rainbows. And I said, Oh, praise the Lord. They're celebrating Noah. Praise the Lord. I don't know what they're trying to do, but that belongs to God, not to them. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Lord.